So what is good guys Adnan here and if you've been around long enough you would know that I have been dailying the OnePlus 5 since about 3 years now. I got this in October of 2017 and now we are in August of 2020. That is quite a long time to be stuck using a single phone. I am upgrading really soon but just as a token of appreciation to my time with this one, here's a few minutes showcasing my experience with the OnePlus 5 over the past 3 years. Let's address the elephant in the room, those huge bezels. It is almost unacceptable to be living with a 16 by 9 thick bezel device in 2020 and even when I picked this up 3 years ago, we had already seen the transition to 18 by 9 displays and shortly after came the horrendous trend of notches. Not gonna lie, I was a bit pissed off at myself for not waiting a couple more months to grab the 5T which had narrower bezels. However, the actual display on this thing kept me hooked on. This was my first time switching over to an AMOLED display full time and I knew from the moment I turned the phone on that this is it, I am never going back. Another reason why I picked the OnePlus 5 was thanks to its industry leading specifications at that time. The Snapdragon 835 inside is still super powerful, almost to the point where it makes me feel guilty for wanting to buy a new phone. I got the 8GB RAM variant which was truly overkill at that time and I walked in knowing full well that I could never fill up the 128GB of storage inside this thing. Zoom past 3 years and I still haven't managed to run low on storage or feel like I need a better performing phone. Apps still load in a jiffy, memory management is an A+, and the phone just flies through anything I throw at it. Battery life also the worse than what it used to be originally is still usable giving me a bare minimum of four and a half hours of screen on time on a heavy day. To top it all off there's still dash charging which juices this bad boy up in no time. Let's talk wear and tear. I've spent the past three years using this phone on and off without cases and skins and the metal unibody build has held up astonishingly well. There are obvious scratches on the display up front but I have only myself to blame for that. I did encounter a few quality control issues 2 years into using this, both the USB-C port and the headphone jack had just loosened up, making charging or plugging in earphones a nightmare. Luckily, a quick 5 minute visit to the OnePlus Experience store fixed this up entirely. The buttons on my unit are also pretty terrible and inconsistent. Sometimes they are tactile and the loudest things ever to press, but other times they just give zero to none feedback. On the rear, we have a dual camera setup with a 16 megapixel primary lens and a 20 megapixel 2x telephoto one. Quite frankly, I never cared too much about how the photos my phone ends up taking, and I also did know that the OnePlus 5 had a mediocre camera while making the purchase decision back in 2017. This camera in 2020 would now be remarked as unforgiving, but to me, it served really well. The only app I use which makes excessive use of the camera is Snapchat, and if you are a OnePlus user, then you know just how good Snapchat performs on all OnePlus phones. I would like to dedicate the remainder of this video to talk about this phone's software, Oxygen OS. I'll just straight up admit, Oxygen OS alone has been enough to keep me hooked on to this phone. In this market of phones that have hardware evolving every few months, I feel the consumers no longer put as much emphasis on the software experience as they should. Buying a OnePlus device grants you the assurance of getting timely software updates and security patches. OnePlus promises up to 2 years of system updates and 3 years of security patches, both of which are only a year less than what the maker of Android itself provides. If it helps, both the OnePlus 3 and 3T were updated from Android Marshmallow to Nougat to Oreo and now to Pi. The OnePlus 5 and the 5T received regular updates from Nougat to Oreo to Pi and now sit at a stable release of Android 10. That is 3 generational updates, pretty much unheard of in the Android ecosystem of phones. Coming back to the OnePlus 5 and the software, I have been loving Oxygen OS 10 based on Android 10. There are numerous tweaks which I feel OnePlus does better than Google itself. The animation seems snappier, RAM management is superior, and the few features that Oxygen OS advertises are all genuinely useful. Oxygen OS also managed to pull me out of the custom ROM experience that I had been living with on the Poco X2 that I switched to only a couple of months ago. I assumed the bigger, faster 120Hz display, better cameras and modern internals would finally break me out of the OnePlus series of phones, but nope, I ended up switching back to my OnePlus 5. Longevity is one of the key aspects to consider in this world of 50, 60, 70 thousand rupee phones, and I couldn't think of a better company than OnePlus in the Android space that offers that longevity. 
that's been it thanks for watching and i'll catch you guys really soon in the next episode